If we took 100,000 people here in the UK and followed them for a year, we'd expect to see about 56 cases of pancreatitis. So if we took 15 times as many people, so 1.5 million people, we'd expect to see 15 times as many cases of pancreatitis in that group. So that would be 15 times 56, which is 840. The thing is, we know that back in March of this year, about 1.5 million people were taking a GLP-1 weight loss medication here in the UK, which means we should be expecting a few hundred cases of pancreatitis. And guess what? That's what we're seeing, and the news is jumping all over it, as though this is somehow proof that GLP-1s are causing a lot of harm. The reality is we do not know if GLP-1 medications cause pancreatitis, but it is something we need to consider and I'm gonna break it down in this video. But before we get into that, it's always important to remember with the media that they are seeing all these millions of people taking GLP-1s, plus a lot more who are probably considering it, who will click on every single story about them. So we're going to see a lot of stories around GLP-1s and journalists seem to be able to make stories out of nothing. And they've not got your best interests at mind, they're not trying to help you make the best healthcare decision for you. They are there to try and get you to read their stories with their dramatic headlines, whether it's rage baiting or scary. So try to look past that and look for the information that you actually need to ultimately make the best decision for yourself. So when it comes to pancreatitis, what is it? Pancreatitis is inflammation of the pancreas and the pancreas is an organ that sits at the back of our abdomen and it makes digestive enzymes and hormones. So if we put itis at the end of anything in medicine, it just means inflammation of that thing. So hepatitis is inflammation of the liver. Dermatitis is inflammation of the skin. Sometimes patients can think that because a doctor's given you a label, it means that we understand absolutely everything about what that condition is. But sometimes that label is literally just a description of what you've just told us you have. For example, there is a word in healthcare which is idiopathic, and idiopathic means of unknown origin. So if somebody says to you, you have idiopathic dermatitis, that sounds like a very good diagnosis, but it literally means you've got inflamed skin, we don't know why. <laughs> so don't always be taken in by the labels. And the reason I'm telling you this is it's important to remember in medicine in general, not just around GLP ones, but we don't know so much. And the more you learn in medicine, the more you realize you don't know, the more you realize there are these massive gray areas. If you go to medical school, you will be taught that in an exam, if it says always or never in the question, it's unlikely that that question is correct because there are very few things in medicine that are concrete. We are operating against risks and balances, likelihoods, rather than absolute, this will happen or that will happen. So that is important to bear in mind as we go through this and not to worry too much about GLP ones and thinking, oh, so much is unknown, so much is unknown generally in medicine. There are lots of different causes for pancreatitis. If you ever become a medical student, you'll likely learn, I get smashed. This is a monomic for all the different causes. And please note the top one there is idiopathic. So we don't always know the cause of pancreatitis. This is important to remember because you'll see lots of people on social media saying, I've had pancreatitis and I'm on a GLP-1. I didn't have any other possible causes. Well, that can happen without a GLP-1. It's the idiopathic group. So it doesn't mean that the GLP-1 has caused it. What is interesting is that in this monomic, you'll also find gallstones there. Gallstones are the single biggest cause of pancreatitis here in the UK, accounting for about 50% of cases. And if you look at the group of patients who might want to take a GLP-1 in the first place, they are more likely to develop gallstones because the risk factors for developing gallstones are the five Fs, which are female, fat, fertile, 40s, and fair-skinned. And then there's the separate discussion about whether or not GLP-1s increase your risk of gallstones. So even if they don't directly cause pancreatitis, could they indirectly be increasing pancreatitis by causing more gallstones? Again, that's an area of debate with some people saying that it doesn't cause an increased risk of gallstones, but it's actually the weight loss that people are experiencing which is increasing their rate of gallstones. And that's the second debate. You can see why it's not clear. And so if you're much more likely to develop gallstones, then you're much more likely to develop pancreatitis. And when we're talking about the background population of how many people should be getting pancreatitis, actually within our cohort who are going on a GLP-1, you might expect that number to even be higher. So just looking at numbers alone, it can be very difficult to establish at what point would we see so many people developing pancreatitis on a GLP-1 that we could definitively say, yes, that GLP-1 
causes pancreatitis. We honestly don't know whether drugs like Wegovy and Tazepatide do actually cause pancreatitis, but if there's an element of doubt as an individual patient, it is safer for you to consider it as a possibility, to think, yes, it may do, when you're factoring in whether or not you should decide to take this medication. If you look at the British National Formulary here in the UK, which is our guidelines for our drugs for clinicians to follow, it does list pancreatitis as an uncommon side effect of taking both semaglutide and tazepatide. Both Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk both record acute pancreatitis as a potential side effect of their drugs. So it is best to consider that it is a potential side effect. However, the studies are not conclusive. There was a study published at the end of 2024 in December, which was looking at whether or not tazepatide caused pancreatitis. And this was interesting because it was a systematic review and meta-analysis, which is where they compiled data from loads and loads of different studies and put it together to look for the big picture. And when they did this, they found that the patients who were taking tazepatide, which is Munjaro or Zepbound, they didn't show any increased incidence of having pancreatitis against placebo. So we really don't know 100% whether or not these drugs do contribute. The other thing that's worth bearing in mind is whether or not people who are usually at risk of pancreatitis are the same people who might get pancreatitis on these drugs. Or could these drugs cause people who don't usually develop pancreatitis, who are less at risk, to develop them? There have been studies going on and people are looking at how can we predict which patients are likely to develop pancreatitis anyway. So this one back in 2022 indicated that things like having type 2 diabetes or smoking may increase your risk of developing pancreatitis, but interestingly, having a higher BMI over 36 might actually be protective. And right now here in the UK, the MHRA are actually reaching out to people saying, if you develop pancreatitis on one of these medications, get in touch with us, fill out our yellow forms. That's always been something you could do, by the way, for drugs that is not new or special just to tazepatide and semaglutide, but fill in one of our forms, get in touch with us, and we potentially want to start looking at people's genetics and seeing genetically which patients are much more likely to develop a pancreatitis on these medications than not. Then we can target these medications at the right patients and tell patients, oh, you're going to be at increased risk. I think this is really exciting. This is truly looking at individualized healthcare and who certain drugs will work for and who they won't work for. So overall, are you at increased risk of developing pancreatitis if you take a weight loss medication? The honest answer is we don't know, but it is a possibility. So factor it into your decision-making process as to whether or not this is a medication that you want to take. And if you do have any concerns about your own specific risks, it is worth chatting about them with your healthcare provider. But don't jump and be scared about all these articles that have come out in the papers. They're really not talking about anything new right now, but that doesn't mean there isn't a risk there to consider.